Hey, what's up y'all? My name's Gary and welcome to a tutorial on building the home feed and Instagram using SwiftUI. Some of you might remember me from my YouTube channel, but today I'm making a Udemy course on building this user interface. You'll see that we're gonna build the story tray, implement a little home feed, mess around with the tab bar, and build out some navigation. If you're just starting out SwiftUI, this mini course will give you some basic skills on how to build out user interfaces. After we finish the Instagram layout, we'll move on to the Tinder swipe animation where you'll learn how to add the drag gesture to views as well as adding basic animations. And finally, how we can leverage state to create a stack of cards. Now let's check out the UI so you can see how I would approach building out the Instagram home feed in SwiftUI. We're in Figma and you can see I have a mock-up of the Instagram home feed. At first sight, the UI looks pretty complex. There's a lot going on here. We have a scrolling feed of photos that's vertically scrolling. We have a horizontal scrolling feed for the stories. There's a bunch of buttons on the feed. Then we have the tab bar buttons. So it can look very complex, but I'm going to show you how I would break this down to make it really simple. We're going to break this down into individual components, and hopefully you can use the same technique on the apps you build. All right, looking at this from a bird's eye view, you can see that I broke up the UI into each individual component that we can code out. So at the very top, we have the navigation bar, which has three buttons and an image for the logo. Then I broke it down into the story trays. So these are gonna be buttons because they have to be tappable, as well as this gradient that we have around the image, the image itself. Then we also have the username right underneath. Following that, we have the header for every single post. So this is the user that posted the image and there's some settings that you can check out, which is also a button. Now going to the image itself, this is pretty self-explanatory, but there's one caveat to this. It has to be scaled correctly. And following that, we have probably the most complicated part of this entire screen, which is the caption area on every single post. So you can see we have a bunch of buttons here uh, underneath that, we have the likes, we have the little caption, followed by a section where you can add a comment or react. And then we have when that image is posted. Finally, we have the tab view itself, which is pretty simple in SwiftUI. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. Now, since we have an overview of each individual component, how can we break this down even more? So the next part of this is actually breaking this down into SwiftUI views. You can see here on the right, I have the actual Swift UI view mapped over to every single part of this UI. So this red is corresponding to the image that I added here. We have these yellow arrows that correspond to the navigation link and image. This is actually a button and the button would have an image. Then I've done the same thing for the story trace. You can see that when I look at this, I see an H stack because it's horizontal content. We have four each. And the one thing I'm actually missing here is a scroll view because we actually want this to scroll. So that would be a top level pairing. Inside of that, we have four each with the buttons inside of B stack with an image and some text. Now I took this approach for every single part of this UI. When we go to the user header section, you can see that it's very similar. We have an image, text. In this case, this could be a button actually. So let's update that. So they're gonna be able to select it. And in fact, let's be a little bit more specific. It's going to be a navigation link that's going to go to the user's profile. We have some white space here, which we can solve by using a spacer. Then we have another button, which has an image of three dots. The next thing is the posts. This is pretty simple in Swift UI. We can just create an image and make it resizable and give it an aspect ratio. Finally, this is the most complicated view. Like I said, there's a lot going on here, but let's start off from the very top. You can see that I broke this down into a V stack, which is the red container, which is going to have an H stack, which is our first row here. And that has a bunch of buttons in it. And each button has an image. So let's break that down even more. Finally, we have the next row, which is just the button where you can see the people that liked it. And underneath that, we have an H stack, which has an image. This is actually the text field because the user can type in it. We have a spacer, then we have some buttons for these icons here. And finally, underneath that, we have some text. And last but not least, we have some navigation. So here we need to create a new tab view. 
and decided that tab view each item is going to have an image. This is how I broke up the UI into individual components. Now, there are some parent components to all of these, which is a V stack. There's going to be a navigation view. There's going to be a scroll view that's going to encapsulate our posts so we can scroll vertically. But other than that, this is basically it. This is going to be a good project if you're just starting out and learning Swift UI or I've messed around in Swift UI for a bit and want something a little bit more complex to build out. Full disclaimer, we're not going to make this pixel perfect and match Instagram exactly, but you should have a rough idea on what it takes to make this kind of UI after finishing this tutorial. All right, the next thing we need to do is fire up Xcode, add some assets and start coding. And if you just want to start with the starter project, which is going to include all the assets that you're going to need, you can find it in the description below. All right, now over to Xcode. All right, so I just created a brand new single view app. I'm in Xcode. The only thing that's different between my project and the one you just created is I added all the assets in that we're going to be using in our application. So we have the feed, a few of the icons, the logos, everything to do with the caption, all that jazz. And all I did was just import these into the project like normal and they're PDFs. So all I did was just set the scale to single and you can do that here. Like I said, if you just want to use the starter project below, all of this would be done for you. But I just want to give an overview for folks that are creating a brand new project and starting from scratch. The only other file that's in here is this assets file. As you can see here, it's been generated using SwiftGen. I'm not going to go in depth on this code, but essentially it's just a giant enum with a bunch of static lets, so constants that point to our images in our asset catalog. Now I wrote a tutorial on how to use SwiftGen. So if you're new to it, or have never used it before, check out this tutorial that I'm going to flash up onto the screen. And there you can kind of get a great understanding on how to implement it into your own projects. But for now, just know that this assets.swift file is mirroring our asset catalog. Now back to the content view. The first thing that we're going to do is some setup work. So we want to add in a navigation view as well as a tab view that kind of builds the entire structure of our app. Then we can kind of focus on every individual component after that. So to do so, what we're going to do is create a navigation view. And if you're new to Swift UI, we can press Command Shift L. Here we can search for different views. If you don't know how to implement a navigation view, you can just click on this and you can see that it adds the code for you. We're not going to use this navigation link and delete it, but we have a navigation view now. Inside of it, we want a tab view. And I want to show you a little trick with tab view. If you search that here, you can see that we have an example here. And what we're going to do is just copy this entire thing. And now just paste it in. Just like that, we have large majority of our app built out. You can see that we can click on all these tabs, switch to the individual screens. Also, I click this play button up here. That way I can get a live preview as I code along. That way I can interact with the simulator. Now that we have our tabs in place, what we want to do is customize them to match Instagram. So if we jump over to Figma, we can see this is our tab view. We have a few icons here as well as the profile image of the user. So now if we jump over to code, what we can do is call this one home. Then here under image, what we're going to do is access our image from our assets file. So what we can start typing is image or is it asset? We start typing asset dot home or just the new name. As soon as you do that, you can see that the home icon shows up. The next thing, there's no text in the Instagram app, so we're going to delete these. And now we're just going to repeat this process for the other icons. All right, so I just finished adding the rest of the tabs. And you can see we can click on these and we kind of get the screens that should display. Like I said, we're building out the home feed, so we're not going to focus on the rest of these tabs. But you can see how easy they are to add. Now the one for the profile, you can see that there's a stroke around it. Normally you could do that client side in the application, or you can have it done on the server. Either way works. For now, we're just using the icon that's in the asset catalog that has the stroke already applied. So that's pretty much it. That's our basic setup. Now we can focus on building out our first component. And if we scroll up, you can see that it's going to be the navigation view. And just to give a brief overview again, we have the image, which is the logo for Instagram. We have space here. Then we have three buttons. 
And we kind of summarized it. We have horizontal stack that's going to encapsulate basically everything here. And for the buttons, we're going to make those navigation links. That way, when we tap on them, we can actually go to a different screen. All right, so let's jump back to Xcode and start implementing that. So the first thing we're going to do is click Command N, and that's going to create a new file. I'm going to click Swift UI View. And here, let's tap in navigation. So if you see this warning pop up saying automatic preview updating paused, you don't have to click this resume button every time because it's going to become very annoying. A keyboard shortcut is Option Command P, and that's going to automatically refresh it. So the first thing we want to do is create that H stack, and that's going to house all of our views here. So the very first one was the image. So let's start with the image. And here we're going to access our assets. We're going to access the logo and the name. You can see Instagram pops up. The next thing we want to do is add a spacer, just like that. And now we have our navigation links. So we had three of them in the designs. And instead of creating three individual ones, what we're going to do is actually create a four each, which is basically a loop that's going to go through an array and create a navigation link. Reduces the repetitiveness of creating three different ones into just one loop. So to create that, all we want to do is create a four each. Inside of it, we can pass in an array. And these are going to be our names for every single icon. So I believe the first one's add. Next one's heart, lastly, messenger. Now we are going to get the image name as an argument. Inside of here, what we're going to do is create. So we have to add one more parameter inside of this for each, which is called ID. And what we're going to do is say self. And this is basically just identify every single item in our array. So inside of our loop, what we're going to say is let's create a navigation link. And like I said, if you get lost and don't know what a navigation link is, totally okay. You can click Command Shift L and get a little description of what one is. Usually they give you some sample code. In this case, they don't have one for navigation link, but anyways, what we can do too is just start typing it out and we have an initializer that we can use. So inside of this navigation link, what we want to do is come down to this initializer here, which expects destination. For the destination, what we're going to do for now is just pass in our image name. Then inside of our label, what we want to do is add an image. And this is just going to be our image name. So once you refresh, click Option Command P, you should get something like this. And to clean this up a little bit more, what we can do is get rid of this label and add a parenthesis and delete this parenthesis here. So if I refresh and build, we should get build succeeded. Now a little refactor is just a little bit cleaner to read. So you can see that we just have a trailing closure is what we call it. Now that that view is built out, let's jump over to our content view and we can implement it. All right, so in our content view, all we have to do now is just create our navigation and initialize it. You can see that it shows up on screen. The first thing I want to do is just nest everything inside of the V stack. So here we're going to create a V stack. Just like that. In fact, let's move this down it's inside of our tab view and delete our text. Now all we have is our V stack, which is gonna have our entire UI for the home feed, and that is gonna be the first tab. Now it looks a little weird. All we have to do is just add a spacer. You can see the content gets pushed out, but now we have some space right above it that we need to get rid of. We can just tell the navigation view to hide the navigation bar. Now it's starting to look a lot better. The last thing I want to do is add some padding. So what we need to do is just say padding. And we only want this applied horizontally. So it should look something like that. All right, so that's one view down. We have a few more to go. Next one's going to be the stories. The next task we have is to build out our stories. And we can see we already went over the concept here. We have an H stack, which has a scroll view, which has a for each, which is going to contain all of our stories. It's pretty should be pretty straightforward. So let's start creating this. I'm going to create a new file. This can be Swift UI view. Just call it story. All right, so let's create one individual story. So one individual circle with an image. So we can start with creating the image. And we have a few avatars in here that I added in. So you can access those. Like avatar zero dot need. Then there should be avatar one, avatar two. Let's start with this one. So the first thing we want to do is make this resizable. And now let's give it a frame. After that, let's just make sure all our images have the correct aspect ratio. So in case you add your own into this project, they'll all work with this too. 
So you can say aspect ratio. Inside of here, what we can do is say fill. Now, the next thing that we want to do, if you didn't have circular images in this project, what we want to do is clip them. And the way we do that is we say clip, and we can use the shape. And here we can pass in the circle. So for example, if this image was a square, this would clip it into a circle. And because the images I use are already circular, you won't really see anything. But if you imported a square image inside of the assets, it would get us to this point that we have here. Now that we've done that, what we need to do is add an overlay. So if we look at the designs just in depth, we can see that there is this white border. Then after the white border, we have our gradient border. We want to replicate that. To do so, what we can do is add an overlay. And this modifier is what it sounds like. We're just going to lay something on top. And inside of this overlay, what we're going to do is create a circle. And we're going to stroke it. And stroke just means add, add a border around it. So inside of Stroop, it takes an initializer. You can already see there's one applied for us. What we can do is say white for the color. Then as another property called line width. And here it's just passing five. And we have to prefix this with color. So you see that our black border goes away. And now we have this white one. Now next, all we have to do is just add another overlay. And the second overlay is going to be our gradient. So for the Stroop here, what we're going to pass in is a linear gradient. And if we initialize this linear gradient, it takes in a bunch of stuff. I just want to add this closing parenthesis here. So you should have two closing ones. And the only other thing I want to add is the line width in here specified too. So if we double click on these blue little fillers that we got, we can get an idea of how this is going to look. So we want this to go at an angle. So let's have our starting point be bottom leading. So this is bottom left. And what we can do is make it go to the top right. So that's going to be top trailing, something like that. Now you can see that we already have like our desired effect. We're not going to match Instagram one for one. They probably have many more different colors in here. They actually have a red orange. So it's. Also, instead of blue, let's make this orange. See if that kind of looks more like it. But you can add more to this array. All you have to do is just append some colors to the end of it if you want to match it one for one with Instagram. But I think this looks pretty good. So now we have one individual story. The next thing we want to do is because these are clickable, what we want to do is actually nest everything inside of a button. So what we can say is button, and that has an initializer of an action. It's not going to be doing anything. We don't need this text, so we can get rid of it. Let's get rid of these parentheses. Delete this label. We're going to close this with a parenthesis and open it with a bracket. And then we're going to add a closing bracket down here. So now if we indent this, we can select it and click Control I and it should indent. And now you can see that we have our image three sizable. We have our frame on it, a bunch of more modifiers. Then we have our overlays to apply our strokes. So the first one's white. Second ones are gradient. Now we want this to be dynamic. We don't just want to hard code this to one avatar. So what we could do is type in let imaging. This can be a type string. And inside of here, what we can do is just replace this with imaging. Our preview down here, all we have to do is just update it. Here we're just passing our asset dot avatar to, for example, and name. And if we run it, we should be back on our current starting place. So now that we have one, we just need to make a list of a bunch of these. And to do that, let's create one more view. So we can click command N. And this is going to be our story list. So inside of this story list, what we can do is first get our preview working. The next thing is I'm going to create an array. So this can be static. Let. I'm going to create an array of image names. That way we have some fake data that we can use. All right, now I have our image names as our fake data. What we can do is start creating our scroll view. So to do that, we're going to have our scroll view. Inside of our scroll view, we need an H stack. So this can be horizontal. Then here, we're going to have our for each. So the next thing we need to add to get rid of this error is our ID. And this time, it's going to be a little bit different. We can't pass in self because we have duplicates inside of our array. So if we did that, we'd only get only four images because they're all repeating. 
So what we have to do is nest our image names inside of another array and call this function called enumerated. This is going to give us an index as well as our name at that index. And inside of ID, what we can do is just pass in an offset. The offset is basically the index for each one of these names in our array. So it should look something like this. We have an array, we have our image names, we call enumerated on it, and then we pass in the offset. So inside of our for each, all we have to do now is just create our story. And our story takes a name and we're just gonna pass in our name. So you can see just like that, our UI just updated. I'm gonna click the play button so we can see this. You can see that it's scrolling vertically now. We can update that by updating our scroll view. Type in horizontal and now it scrolls horizontally. So that was pretty simple. You can see also when we tap these, we get that nice little animation. So the only thing we need to add is just the name right below the image. To do that, we're going to have to nest everything inside of a VStack. And below that, we're going to add some text. And for now, let's just add the username as the name of the asset. Now, before we add this to our home feed, let's just make this look a little bit nicer. So the first thing is let's keep this text to size to 12. So that looks a little nicer. The next thing I want to do is give some padding to this image. You can see it kind of clips all the way up here. What we can do is just give some padding to the H stack. And for the parameter, it's passing vertical. The last thing we want to do is if we run this right now, you will see that we have this little bar here. We can get rid of that. And that's just easy as passing in a parameter. And we just pass in shows indicator and set that to false. So now when we scroll, we don't see that. The last thing we need to do is just add this to our content view. And underneath our navigation, we can just say story list. The last thing I want to do is give some padding to our leading, so padding and just pass in the leading. And now when we run this, you can see that we have our stories here. We can select them and I think it looks pretty nice. The next thing that we want to do is focus on our feed. We need a way to display the photo as well as the caption comment section area. If we jump back to Figma, we can see that we are just showing an image. So that shouldn't be too difficult to do. Then the difficult part is going to be creating this view because there's a lot of things going on inside of it and if you remember we broke it down into a few different steps so we're going to be using this as our reference guide and anytime we get stuck we can flip back to it just make sure that we're on the right track the first thing we can do is create a new swift ui view and this is going to contain all our code for one individual image and caption so come here this is going to be a cell or an item, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call this feed item. And we already have a few images in our side of our asset catalog that we can access. So mainly just one image. If you wanted more, you can drag some in. Right now I just have this one called feed dash image. That's going to be our sample image that we're going to be displaying. If we jump back to our view that we just created, what we can do is just pop the image onto the screen. We're going to access our assets. This can be feed image. And just like that, our image is here. You shouldn't have to do much customization to this. Um, you can make it resizable and just make sure that the content mode or the aspect ratio is fit. That way, if they upload a one by one image or a four by three in this case, it will keep that aspect ratio. One thing that you have to keep in mind, Instagram doesn't support 16 by 9 aspect ratio for images, only for stories. So if you were building this out further, farther along, you'd want to guard against that case. Now that we have our image, the interesting part is going to be creating the caption area. The first thing we want to do is encapsulate everything inside of the VStack. So let's use a VStack and I'm going to select everything and just indent another one for our caption area. So I'm just going to say VStack. Inside of here, we'll have all our views for the caption. One thing we can do now while we're creating this is just add a spacer. And you can see when I add this, it pushes everything up. That way we can just see everything a little bit better. But don't forget, we're going to need to remove this later. So the first thing we need to do is we had a row of buttons that you could select. Now we can create an array for this 
and it's going to be just the button names. Instead of having our array inside of this B stack, let's actually make a constant and we're just going to store this in the constant. And now all that's left to do is for us to create an H stack and for each, we can't forget about this ID property. We're getting an error here saying that our asset type doesn't conform to hashable. To fix this compiler error, all we have to do is just append name to all of these and it should go away. Now that is gone, all we have to do now is just create a button and this is going to be for all these captions. For the action, let's just leave that blank for now. And inside of here, we need an image and just pass in our button. Those are showing up on screen. All we need to do is just add a little bit of space between them. And what we're going to do is after button, we're going to say if our button equals asset dot share dot name, we're just going to add a spacer. So once that is added, you'll see that we have a nice space here. One last thing we want to do is just add some more spacing to our stack view. Okay, we can do that via this property inside of the initializer. All right, so that's step one of working on our caption section. The one thing I want to do real quick is just clean everything up here. So let's get rid of this label. We can make this a trailing closure. And then this is just to make sure it's on its own line. That looks a lot better. Our V stack might get a little bit big here because now we have a whole nother section we need to add. So our V stack ends here. So top. And now we need to just add one button for this row. So this is going to be pretty simple. This is going to be a button. And then we can just give it a foreground color. And it's going to be black. Now you can see that it's off to the middle. I believe we can just give an alignment to our V stack and fix it. So this could be meeting and just like that, it's starting to look really nice. All right, the next part is we have a comment or a caption that you can see is a little complex. We have a button for the username and we have the text. I'm not gonna do this more button. I think that is a little bit beyond the scope because then we need to get into animations and all that stuff. We're just gonna keep it pretty basic. So. Let's just add a button for the username and some text right after it. And again, I'm going to clean this up a bit more. Just make it look a little bit nicer. And again, let's just give it foreground color of black. Or now do you also need to give make this bold so it stands out a little bit. And the next part of this is just adding some text for the caption right after it. So this will require us to create another H stack. And the first part of it is going to be the button. Part two of the each stack is going to be the text. So this is just going to be the caption. And to make this a little bit smaller, let's just give the spacing of four. I think that looks pretty nice. The next part of our row is going to be the icon and the text field as well as this tiny little button. So again, this is going to be another each stack. So let's just leave a comment here. It's going to be user caption. The first thing we need to do is add an image. And then for the profile, we're just going to access it via the assets. And this is going to be the assets. And I believe the one we want is going to be friend and name. It's just like that. It pops up. The next part of this is going to be a text field. There's a few different initializers. We're just going to use the first one. So this, I believe, is going to be some text. And on Instagram, it says add comment. And now we need a binding to some kind of string. Now, since we're not making this work, what we can do is just pass in a constant and just pass in an empty string. So that looks pretty nice. The last part of this is we just need to add another button. So this can be button. I'm gonna just slide this up a bit. Inside of this button, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing we've been doing with all our buttons. It's gonna take an action. And inside of it, we're just gonna have an image. All right, I think that looks pretty nice. The last part of this little caption caption section is just a text label and we can leave a comment here. So this is the comment and last but not least, we need the time that it was posted. So we're just going to say 10 minutes ago. This also needs to be a smaller font. So we're going to say font. Maybe we can get away with using caption. I think that looks nice. The one other thing I want to do is just make sure that 
it's the different colors. The color that I'm going to pass in here is going to be a, a UI color. What we want to do is access the system gray. We can do five. I think that maybe three. Just keep in mind, there's a lot of different system colors that you can use. So you don't have to define all of your colors yourself. There's actually a bunch that you can use. UI color has a lot of different ones. And I think this one looks pretty close. The last thing I want to do is come up here to the lights. Let's just make sure that this is bold and let's give it a different size. All right. So font system size 14. That looks pretty good. Don't worry about the margins or padding on the side, whatever you want to call it. The last thing we need to do is just add our header at the top. So I was saving that for last because we basically built it right here, minus the text field. So all we have to do is copy this and add it to the top. So I'm just going to copy this and we're going to come up here above our image and I'm going to paste that in. So instead of our text field, we just had a button here. So we can actually copy this one or we can replace this one. And this is just going to be our image for, I believe we call them more and we're going to see name. So those little dots pop up. But before we had this button, we actually need one for the username. So I'm going to use copy this, paste it. And for this button, we're going to delete the image and the text is just going to be our username. Feel free to just use yours. I'm going to use mine. And let's give it a foreground color. And it's going to be black. And what we can do is just make this bold. We need to have a little bit of space between these two buttons. So here we can also just say spacer. All right. I think that looks pretty good. This is one item that has our header, our image, as well as a little caption area down here. Now, what we need to do is just throw this into a for loop. We're going to repeat it a bunch of times. That way you can scroll through it and just mess around. Like I mentioned, you can add more images to the asset catalog. I believe it will work as long as the aspect ratio is not too funky. And keep in mind, you want to add in some images that aren't ginormous. You want to make sure that the simulator or your device doesn't have to draw a giant five, six megabyte PNG. You want to keep these relatively small. Instagram, for example, downsamples most of their images without losing too much quality. The last thing I want to know, we hard coded a lot of data here. So how would you make this dynamic? For example, the username, the image here, let me just leave a comment. This is the header. We have the image here, it's top section. This is the likes. And then we have the user caption as well as the comments. And last but not least, the time. So everything's commented here. Let's delete the spacer. We're not going to need it anymore. So there we go. Back to what I was saying. How would you make this text dynamic and all of these things? Well, essentially you want to create a model that would mimic the data that would need to be on this card. For example, you need a username, you need an image, you need a profile image URL. This would be the image URL. You need how many likes the post has the caption. Again, we have the username, all this stuff. All you'd want to do is create a struct with all those values and you want to have a property on this that you would inject. So you'd make the API request to Instagram or wherever you're fetching this data from. And you'd have a property here called say photo data. And this would be some kind of struct of the photo data. And this struct would contain all of that information. But for now, it's just hard coded. So you get the general understanding on how to build the UI, which is the most important part. All we have to do now is just jump back to our content view. All right, so now we're in our content view. All we have to do here is add a scroll view, which is gonna hold all of our items. And we'll make this vertical, which is the default, I believe. So we don't need that. We'll hide the indicators. So we'll just pass some false here. We'll clean this up a bit too. So after the false, let's just close this off with the parentheses that open it with a bracket. And inside of here, we just need to display our feed items. So to do that, we're going to create a for each. Inside of it, we are going to create a range where we make this to 10. And we're not going to need the argument, so we can just skip it. And we just need to pass in our feed item. All right. And now we can refresh the preview. I'm playing mine in the simulator. And you can see that we have a feed of photos. So each one has a caption area. All that jazz looks pretty nice. The one thing you want to do is probably add some padding on this. So what we can do 
we don't want it on everything which is the tricky part so maybe it would be better if we jump back to our feed item then inside of here let's just add a little bit of padding to our age stack up here and then let's just pass in four so that looks pretty nice we just want to do the same thing for uh, our caption area so we just had one v stack that kind of had everything in it so let's just come down here say padding say horizontal and pass in four all right so that gives everything a little bit of breathing room and if we jump to our content view let's just see how this looks i think that looks pretty good i hope you learned a lot here if you did be sure to drop a like on this video this was a fun build and i hope you can appreciate how fast we were able to create a pretty complex user interface granted not all the functionalities here but the layout which is a pretty important part is built out and now we need to add things in like navigation real api data and some animations hey y'all hope you enjoyed that tutorial if you want the code that was in this video check it out on my patreon as well as all the code for all my previous videos and other cool stuff i post there all right well i'll see you in the next one bye The starter project has a few things in it, like this photo in the asset catalog. Also, I added this model for a user. Um, it has a name, a bio, an image, and some dummy data that we're going to be using. You should have a basic understanding too of H stacks, V stacks, and Z stacks, and what state is. So how we can modify state, and when that state's modified, you know that that part of the UI is re-rendered again. So those are the two concepts kind of prerequisites to this video. Only new concept really here is geometry reader, which is the first view that we're going to be creating. And this gives us an argument of a proxy. This proxy has dimension data like positioning and size, and we're going to be using that in our child views later on to position them correctly. Inside of this geometry reader, let's add a Z stack. And now you can think of the Z stack as a bunch of our cards laid up one on top of the other. We're going to be creating one card in this example, but part two, I'm going to be showing you how you can slide through multiple cards. So let's start small. Let's start with one card. So we are going to be creating a new card view. Let's just start typing this out. And we're going to be passing in this proxy. Let's call it proxy. So I'm going to come up here, create a new file. It's going to be a Swift UI view, call it card view. And the first thing we need to add is a property and our preview is also going to expect a proxy. So what we could do is create geometry reader, the proxy. And one thing you can't forget is this in keyword. And I think I forgot that back in our content view as well. Great. So if you build everything, you should get something like this. And now we're going to be doing most of our work inside of this body in our card view. So we have our proxy, so we have data from our parent that gives us positioning and size that our body can use. Now we're gonna be using this screenshot as some inspiration to get the dimensions of this card. So now that we have the dimensions figured out on how this big this card needs to be, let's create it. So first let's create a rectangle and this is going to be our backdrop you can think of for this card and let's give it a corner radius. All right, so now we're going to give a frame to our rectangle so we can use the frame modifier. And we're going to use the argument max width. And this is going to be our proxy dot width, our size dot width. And let's give it a bit of margin on each side. So I'm just going to say 28, 14 on each side. Next, we're going to give a max height. And this is going to be our proxy dot size dot height. And let's multiply this by 0.8 so it takes about 80 percent of the screen give or take now i'm just going to format this really quick you can see now when we do this our rectangle is kind of up and in the corner what we want to do is center it right so we can give it a position and position is another modifier and what we can do now is access our proxy again then use this frame function in coordinate space. We can do global 
Are we going to access the mid X? You can see when I do that, it centers. And we're going to do the same thing for the Y. So proxy dot frame in global. And it's going to be mid Y. So I want to push this up a little bit. So I'm just going to say minus 30 ish from a little bit of margin and do minus 50. That pushes it up a little bit more. Sometimes too, what you can do is change this to local. So we use the coordinate system of itself and you can see that looks a little bit better. I'm going to lower this to about 30. So something like that is where I want to position this view. I'm just going to scooch this over a bit. That way it's not cut off. At this point, we already have our card built out. We just need to add our image as an overlay. And I say overlay because that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using the overlay modifier. And this allows us to put any type of content, just like the content in our body. So some view inside of it. And what we're going to be doing again is getting a geometry reader. That way we can read the local coordinate space of uh, this Z stack we're going to be essentially adding, which is going to have an image. Then we're going to layer some text on top of the image. So that's why we're doing a Z stack. But before that, we need geometry reader again, because we're going to need some positioning and dimension data, uh, passing that down to our Z stack. So we're going to say proxy, or we have to call this something else here. Let's just say, or let's try using proxy. Inside of here, we're going to have Z stack. Then this part is pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to create an image first. And I called this me, I believe. We might get an error here because I keep forgetting this in keyword. Okay. So at this point, we have the image already, which is great. We're going to add some modifiers onto it. So the first one is going to be resizable. We're going to add some aspect ratio. This should be fill. Beautiful. So it starts to look really good. And last, let's add clipped. That way it clips to the bounds of the rectangle. So no, nothing overflows or looks weird. The next thing, we want some text at the very bottom. And that's why we use this proxy because we're going to need some coordinate data of this local space. So we can add that real quick. Let's create a V stack. And essentially, we're just going to have two text. The first one's going to have like my name and the other one can have like your occupation or whatever you want this to be really iOS developer. Let's make this leading and let's give the foreground color a white. If you're wondering how I'm moving so fast too, it's because I'm using Vim uh, as my text editor inside of Xcode. That way I never leave the keyboard. That's how I can kind of do this really quickly. Um, let's give some font weight to both these. Let's just say bold. You can customize this however you'd like, but for now, I think this is good. Last, we just need to position this again. So let's use the position. It takes the X and Y, so we're going to be using the proxy. What we want to do is position it to the bottom left, essentially. So X is going to be the same, essentially, as it is now, which is in the local space and we're going to say min x the thing about this is we're going to need to add some margin from the edge so it's just do plus 50 we're going to have to do plus 100 maybe see so plus 75 okay so you can see that now it's aligned uh to our leading with a little bit of margin the next thing we have to do is do the same for the y-axis so we're going to say proxy dot frame local and this is what i mean about like geometry proxy is not that hard once you've done a few examples this one's gonna be max x or max y sorry um it all kind of starts to make sense you can see we need some padding here to scooch it up because remember we made our card about 80 percent of its parrot so to scooch it up we're gonna need to do like minus just do 50 something like that I think that looks pretty good. And again, let's format this. I wish there was a shortcut to format in this, like there is in VS Code. Oh. Anyways, let's jump back to this. <clears throat> let's not stress out about that stuff. Cool, so we have our card basically. Um, now we just need to add that swipe feature that Bumble and Tinder both have. 
So to create a new drag gesture, let's come up here and we call this drag gesture. This drag gesture has a bunch of modifiers like everything else. What we want to do first though is add this to our rectangle. So what we can do is come down here and say gesture, drag gesture. And we want this to animate as we drag. So let's just add that real quick and animation. And this is going to be interactive spring. This is Apple's default animation for interactive. Anytime you're long pressing, dragging, uh, things like that, you want to use this one. And again, you can customize it obviously. So if it doesn't fit your needs, just uh, update the animation. But for this tutorial, it works fine. Now this drag gesture has a few modifiers like I mentioned, and the main one that we're going to be concerned with is called updating. You can see it takes in some kind of gesture state as the first argument. So let's come up here, add that. So it's going to be this new property wrapper called gesture state or say bar translation, which is the distance that you pan when you're dragging. And I believe it's going to be a CG size and we're going to initialize it to zero and that's important. So what we're going to do, say we're updating this gesture so we can use a dollar sign syntax and type in translation. Then we get this body. All you need to do is just click enter and we get this value. We get state and we get transaction, which we're not going to be using. So you can just ignore it. And essentially all we have to do in here is set our state. Our state is this translation here and we're setting it to a new value. So value dot translation, just like that. It's really that easy. You can imagine in UI kit, this would take hours upon hours to do, but Swift UI just makes it so simple. Uh, the last thing we need to do before all of this works, actually, let's just run this real quick and see if we can get this animation to work. You can come up here and click the play button inside your simulator. And when we try to drag our view right now, nothing happens. So what we're missing is actually modifying some kind of property on our view in order to make it move. And what we're going to be modifying is called the offset. This offset has an X and Y, and we're going to be modifying the X. So translation, which is our gesture state, and we're going to be accessing its width, which is like the X. You can modify the Y as well if you want, just pass the transi translation dot height here. Um, but I'm going to set it to zero. I don't want the user to be panning up and down just horizontally. And you can see just like that, we already have our animation here. We can start dragging it and just like that it works. That's the bulk of this. The last chamber we want when uh, the user starts panning left or right. So we can add some gesture state. And we can call this degrees, for example, because we're going to be setting uh, the degrees that we're going to rotate the card. And what we can do is just set this to a double and initialize it to zero. And again, we're going to add this updating function and it's, we're going to be updating our degrees. Then inside of this state, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to have a ternary operator to see if the translation is positive. That means they're swiping right. If it's negative, that means they're swiping left. So let's add that real quick. So if it's greater than zero, the degrees are, is going to be two. If it's less, it's going to be negative two. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now all we have to do is come down here, we add a rotation effect and it's going to be degrees and we're going to pass in our degrees. All right. And just like that, you can see if we run on the simulator that it rotates a little bit as we drag it to left and right. So that's pretty much it folks for this part of the tutorial. We're going to start off by creating a stack of cards that you can swipe and remove. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is add some more animations um, to spice things up a bit. So uh, if you want, there's a starter project in the description that you can download. It has a few extra things like an extra image in the asset catalog. Also, I added this model for a user um, it has a name, a bio, an image, and some dummy data that we're going to be using. This dummy data refers to our card here. So the image, the name, the bio, basically all that fun stuff. 
the first thing we want to do is calculate uh, when we should remove the card. So if I start sliding this or swiping it, if I pass a certain threshold, say like right here, we want to get rid of the card. So to solve this, what we can do is create a constant and call this threshold. Let's just say the threshold is 50%. So if they drag more than 50% of our screen's width, we will say that that's good enough to remove the card. You can play around with this value, whatever uh, suits your needs. Um, and we have this modifier called unended. We could say when the gesture ends, did the drag gesture move more than 50%? If it did, let's remove the card from the stack. To do that, let's calculate the drag percentage. And that's pretty easy to do. What we can do is say value.translation.width. So this is the drag in the horizontal axis. And we can divide that by our screen width to get us the percentage. Finally, we can just have a check and we want to get the absolute value of our drag percentage. And if that is greater than our threshold, what we want to do is remove the card. So what we want to do here is call some kind of function to tell our content view to get rid of the card. And what we want to do first is pass down some values into our card. So the first one is going to be a user object. So this can be of type user. And you can imagine what we use this for. This is going to have all our data to populate our card. So we can say user.image. It's going to be user.name. And finally, user.bio. So that's going to give us dynamic data here. Um, the next thing we want to do is send over some kind of index. So we know the index of this card because we're going to have a stack of them. And this is going to be of type int. And the last thing we want to do is have some kind of closure that we call to notify our content view to remove this card. Kind of like what I just said a second ago. So what we can do is just call this on remove. And this will take um, an index and return void. And you'll see in a second how everything comes together. So the first thing we want to do is if we're past our threshold, let's call on remove and we can pass in our index and this is optional. The next thing we want to do is we're going to have some errors down here that we need to solve. So let's first say user. We can initialize this to a dummy user. Next, we have index, which is says zero. And finally on remove, we can just pass in nil. The next thing we need to do is solve these compiler errors that we have here. So the first thing we want to do is create some kind of state is going to be an array of users that are in our content view. So we can say at state bar users, and we're going to initialize this to our dummy data. So initially we have some users to play around with. You can imagine, and again, this could be a fetch request that you make that populates this array of users. Um, now let's create our stack. So to do that, we're just going to use the for each. Inside of this for each, we're going to pass in our users. That's going to give us an array. Or, uh, or that's going to give us a closure and it's going to give us a user. And inside of here, we are going to pass in our card view. So our card view has changed quite a bit. Let's just call the initializer here. We're going to pass in our proxy. We're going to pass in our user. We still need this index, which is unclear how we're going to get it. And we have this closure for on remove that gives us an index. So. To get this index that we pass into this argument, what we want to do is call this function called enumerated on users. This is going to give us an index as well as the current user at that index. And it's going to give us some warnings here. Uh, first thing we need to do is wrap this inside of an array. And once we do that, we need to add this ID. And this is going to be equal to the offset, which is a property that we get from enumerated. The next thing we need to do is modify this a bit. This is going to give us an index. Then it's going to give us a user. And don't forget the keyword in. Last but not least, let's pass an index into our function. And if I build this, we should get all of our warnings 
to go away, just like that. So I'm gonna format this real quick so it becomes a little bit clear and I'm gonna go over it one more time. All right, and finally, I'm just gonna build this. So what we did here was we created a for each, which is a for loop that is gonna loop over our users. We used this special enumerated function, which gives us this index as well as the user at that index. Then we created our card, which now takes a few more properties that we just created. We pass those into our card. Finally, we have this closure. So right now, if we were to swipe on this, we can see that we have another card underneath it. But now we need to remove one. And again, we already made the code that calculated whether we passed a certain threshold. It's gonna give us a callback here inside of this closure. So what we can do is access our array and we can remove at an index, just like that. And now let's try it out. You can see just like that, we remove these cards. It works really well. And we get on to the last one. Let's quickly add a button at the very bottom of this C stack. Let's see if we could do this. And inside of this, what we wanna do is just say users.append and we can append our users again. So user.users. .users. So this is our fake data that we can append. Uh, this button is looking a little weird. Also, I forgot to call the wrong function. This is supposed to be contents of. Now let's just position this button out of the way. So what we can do is just say position X. We can say proxy dot frame in. I don't think it matters here. We can say frame in local. And this would be equal to the mid X. Then for the Y, or that's, that's fine right there. Let's just keep it right there. That way we can just click this button after we've swiped through all our cards and it reloads them for us. All right, so that's how you can create a stack of these cards. And now let's add a few more animations to kind of spice this up. The first animation I want to add is to add some kind of scale. So right now you can see the card underneath this is the same size. And I want the card that is underneath the top one to be a little bit smaller. And after you swipe, let's make it grow to be uh, the regular height. So to do this, what we can do is go back to user and we can add one more property and let's just say is behind. And let's give it a default value. Uh, let's say is behind true. Then for our very last item in our array, because since this is a Z stack, this one's gonna be our very first item, even though it's our last one. What we can do is say is behind, then we can say false, just like that. And let's make this a variable as well. So once you've added that variable and added it to the very last card. So now if we jump to our card view, what we can do is add a new modifier for scale effect. And all we have to do is just say user dot is behind. If it is behind, we're gonna say scale it to 0.95. Otherwise it's gonna be a one. And we can jump to our content view. And we can kind of see that this card that's behind it is smaller. So all we have to do now is just modify every single card after it's removed. So what this is gonna look like is users dot, or users at index. And we wanna get uh, the card behind it. So we can say minus one. So this is gonna be the fourth card, for example. We can say is behind equals false. And I forgot the S right here. So now if we swipe through this, you can see that we get this little scale animation. One thing we need to watch out for is when we get to index zero. So if index is greater than zero, we can under enter this block. Otherwise, we're just gonna get out of it. And again, this is because we're using a Z stack. The very first card in our Z stack is the very last card in their array. So that's why we're counting down. So I'm gonna run through these one more time. You can see that we get that cool little scale effect. We can reload these. So that's the first animation that I wanted to show you. Uh, the next thing is something that's in the Bumble app. In the Bumble app, when you start to swipe left or right, you get this little icon that shows up that shows you 
um, basically like a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, it's really kind of cool. So I wanted to show you how easy it is to make. All right, folks, so I'm back in our card view. We want to go into our V stack or Z stack, which is here. And let's go right below our little bio. And we're going to create a rectangle and we can give it a frame. And it's going to be width of 50, height of 50. We can give it a foreground color and let's just say red. Let's give it a corner radius of 25. And what we can do is just give it some position. So we can say position. So we use our proxy dot frame. And we would just say our local space. And this can be equal to our mid X. And we can give this a little margin. So it's just say minus like 50 or something. And now we just need to do the same for proxy dot frame in local. And this can be mid Y. All right. So you should be centered and it's a little off to the left a bit. I'm going to quickly indent all of this to to make it look a little bit better. I keep saying this, but I wish we had something to format code in Xcode. Hopefully that comes in Xcode 14. So the next thing we want to do is add some kind of overlay. And we can overlay some text inside of here. We can just do like the thumbs down emoji. You might get weird errors here after adding this overlay, but everything should build correctly. I think this is just an issue with Xcode. I don't know why it does this. You can see some of my modifiers turn different colors. Uh, it's just really strange. Sometimes quitting Xcode and restarting gets rid of it. But I'm just going to carry on. So we have this little rectangle. All we need to do is just uh, animate it a bit. So the first thing that we're going to animate is the opacity. So what we can do is just say opacity and we're going to use our degrees. So if the degrees are less than zero, that means we're sliding left. If that is the case, let's make the opacity one. Otherwise it's going to be zero. And the last thing we can do is just animate this. Um, now, if we start to slide, we can see that our animation shows up just like that. The last thing I want to do is show you how we could scale this a bit so we can make the red circle a little bit bigger. And again, if your uh, code sense or whatever the compiler is for the code source kit, if it starts to go, maybe try because mine is right now. You can see that the frame is two different colors. It's giving me a rough time. Sometimes you can quit Xcode and restart it and hopefully that fixes the issue. I don't know why this happens. Also, you can just try upgrading to the next Xcode to see if that resolves the issue, but there's some kind of bug. So that's just something to watch out for. Um, the next thing that we're going to add though is the scale effect. Um, to add this, all we want to do is add another gesture state and we want to know whether we're dragging. So we can say is dragging and here it's going to be a bool, just say false. And we're just going to add another modifier here and set of degrees. We're going to say is dragging. And here, all we're going to say is state equals value dot translation dot width doesn't equal zero. So if it's not zero, we know that we're dragging in the left or right direction. And what we can do is come below opacity and just say scale say so is dragging so if we are dragging the scale will be two otherwise it'd be one now let's build this let's add the scale effect right above our animation and now you can see it's animating just like we want so all we have to do is just add this to the right side which is pretty trivial all we have to do is just copy this and again uh, my text editor, our Xcode's giving me a rough time. It's not letting me add rectangle. Come on. All right. So just paste that right below the other rectangle. And let's change this to a heart. And we can change this to green. The next thing we can do is just say plus 50. And now the last thing we have to do is just modify this condition. So if the degrees are greater than zero, that way we're swiping to the right. 
Ah, uh, then we can show the heart. So now you can see the heart shows up. If we slide this way, we get the thumbs down. Awesome. So that's pretty much it that I have in this part two for y'all. Hope you learned a lot. If we jump back to our content view, we can kind of get the entire app to run real quick, just to make sure that we have no bugs. See that our hearts work perfectly. We get that little pop from the skill effect that we added. Now we have the next card, the next card, and then finally the last one. All right, y'all, hope you learned a lot in this series. If you enjoyed it, uh, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Throughout the week, I can kind of check those and respond. Hey y'all, hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you want the code that was in this video, check it out on my Patreon, as well as all the code for all my previous videos and other cool stuff I post there. All right, well, I'll see you in the next one.